Welcome, it's indisputable. I'm your host, Rashad Richard, good to be with you. We got a lot on the agenda today, breaking down news of the day. Baron Cousins host Ring of Fire should be an amazing show. Also in the bullpen, we have Mr. Eric Peterson. We are going to talk about Elon Musk buying Twitter. Mr. Peterson is a tech policy expert. Top story of the day. The police fatally shot a black man in the back of the head. Now I'm going to first show you the video from the officer of why this black male had an interaction with the police. Here it is. Hey, stay in the car, stay in the car, stay in the car, get in the car. Dude, I'm stopping you. Do you have a license? Do you have a license? For what? I'm stopping you. Do you have a license? What done? Do you have a driver's license? Do you speak English? Yes. Can I see your license? <laughs> what does that? The plate doesn't belong in this car. The plate doesn't belong on the car. It is over a tag, okay? Uh, the black male is Patrick Lyoya. Uh Patrick was pulled over by Grand Rapids police. Now, the video from the officer's footage, his own camera went out, magically stopped right before he shot and killed the black male. Here it is. Let go of the taser. What's the problem? Let go of the tape. <laughs> According to the police officer, his body camera simply malfunctioned right before he shot and killed this young black male in the back of the head. And then it started working again when they uh, when officers responded and paramedics came to attempt to save his life. Now remember, there's a bystander uh, who also recorded. Here's that recording. Let go, Taser! Think how many cars you got going? Drop Taser! Everyone. Get back! Get back! Let's put up a picture of the victim here. I'm going to explain a few things. Number one, that man should be alive. Number one, let's keep his picture up. That is a confused individual who is simply wondering why he's being pulled over. Patrick Lyoya had no idea that the moment he was looking at the police officer, that moment would soon expire his life. Just because someone, and I know I will get pushback when we post this on our YouTube page and Facebook watch, and people will say, well, Doc, he deserved it. He was struggling with the police. You have to understand something. Just because someone may deserve to see a judge does not mean they deserve to see their creator. He should be alive, and I'm going to prove how police officers have routinely allowed an individual who happened to be of a different hue, a different complexion, survive in a situation that was much more dangerous to the cop. Now, I have to also remind everyone, a taser is considered to be a non-lethal device. It is so non-lethal that in order to be taser certified, the police officer must be tasered during training to be certified to have a taser. A cell phone video from a bystander shows a police officer shoot 
Patrick Lyoya in the head while Lyoya is on the ground struggling with the officer. Grand Rapids, uh, Rapids Police Chief Eric Winstrom showed dash cam, cell phone and body cam video of the shooting Wednesday, April 13th during a press conference at City Hall. Kent County prosecutors in a statement released Wednesday said no decision will be made on potential charges against the officer until a state police investigation is finished. Prosecutor Chris Becker said the investigation will include a review of all videos and witness statements. He asked for community patients and said the review would take time. He did not specify how much time, all right? Um, it's a bunch of bull, you know, when they say things like that, the fix is in, just understand that. They're trying to figure out how to kick the can down the road, allow some of the media attention to decrease. And then they will come out with their normative finding that the cop was justified. I hope I'm wrong. There's more. Uh, Patrick Lyoya, 26 years of age, was shot and killed April 4th, following what police said was a traffic stop and struggle with an officer at a Southeast Grand Rapids intersection. Now, once again, people are going to say, well, the officer feared for his life. Really? He feared for his life. There's a man on the ground. Yeah, there's a struggle. The guy doesn't want to go to jail. But should that give a license for the police officer to become judge, jury, and executioner? You have to ask yourself these questions because once they knock on your neighbor's door and you say nothing, they will eventually knock on yours. So I'm saying something, I hope you say something as well. And let me remind you of a story we covered just a few days ago on Indisputable of a white male who was wanted for murder who actually stabbed a police officer multiple times <laughs> inside of a home with other cops and that person was not killed. Put up the picture of that criminal. Mm. But what do we have here? You see the man you're looking at, his name is Matthew Lands. Matthew Lands stabbed an officer multiple times inside of a Sandy Springs, Georgia home. Was released from the hospital late Friday after that incident and then taken into custody according to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. The GBI said it was asked to take over the case. Now there's some interesting facts here. The guy was already wanted for murder. He committed burglary inside of somebody else's home. You had multiple police officers inside of the home begging and pleading with the white male, please come down, Mr. Bad Guy. We don't want to hurt you. He comes down the stairs. They don't rush him. There's no SWAT. There's no grenade. There's no shooting. He comes downstairs. He finds one of the cops and he starts to stab that cop. Put up the picture of him stabbing the police officer. That police officer could have died, multiple stab wounds, repeatedly in the back and the neck. Police said the officers attempted to use a taser on lands without success. So what happened? All of these cops, even after lands, fought the police, stabbed the police. They still fought with them, tried to use tasers. They didn't try to use a gun. The fight goes from inside of the house to outside of the house. Still, nobody kills him. And then a cop shoots to wound him outside of the home. He is at that time arrested, taken to a hospital, and then later booked. He will have due process. So the question is, why is it? That Mr. Lance posed a much more significant threat to law enforcement, had already proven that he's willing to kill law enforcement. Why is it that his life was spared? Why was his life valuable to the cops who decided not to kill him? Why did he get the benefit, the right of due process, but the black male did not? 
Farron, you've covered a lot of these stories, brother. I'm proud of your reporting as always. Give us your insight into this. Well, you know, you made several points that were exactly what I've been thinking since I first saw that video yesterday. And that is that this man was robbed of his due process, his constitutional rights. I mean, obviously, yes, he was murdered, and that's the big issue. But when these cops do go out there, as you pointed out, they're judge, jury, and executioners. Running from the police, resisting the police is not a capital offense. But he was executed by that officer in that video. What we just witnessed was a public execution for the crime of resisting a police officer. And also to your point about the people saying, well, he shouldn't have resisted. He should, listen, how many videos have we seen of people not resisting that still get murdered by the police, right? You get a knee on the back of your neck, you get a chokehold until you die. That man had every right to be terrified of what that officer would have done to him even without the gun. Because we have seen too many of these instances. I mean, I I never in my life thought I would be on social media watching people get executed by police officers. Mm. But that's what we see these days, that's what's coming out constantly. And again, as I always say, thank God people have their phones out. Otherwise, we wouldn't know most of this is happening. It would get swept under the rug. Nobody would pay any kind of penalties for this whatsoever. The families would grieve in the shadows and the cops would get away with it. And unfortunately, they still too often get away with it even with the videos. But this problem isn't getting better. The police are not doing better jobs. They're doing the same thing they have always done. And we have to keep paying attention to this because what we just witnessed again was a public execution for the crime of resisting a police officer, which of course is not a capital offense. That's right, and listen, Farron, I believe this cop turned off his body camera intentionally. I think he believed that no one else was recording. He's in an area that he's familiar with. He knows there are no other cameras fixated on that location. But it just so happened that somebody was recording as well. Think about this, if the bystander had not recorded, we would have never known how violent and insane that killing was. We would have never saw it. And he would have simply claimed, well, the body camera malfunctioned during that pivotal time. There's a man who preyed on multiple women, was accused of rape and sexual assault, and received a sweetheart deal because his daddy is a prosecutor. Put up his picture. Let me give you some insight. This guy will only get probation, flagrant miscarriage of justice. 19 year old rapist whose father works at the DA's office has been handed probation for sexually assaulting a pastor's daughter due to a plea deal which saw his crimes downgraded to assault and battery. Meanwhile, this rapist has already skated on two other allegations. His name is Bowen Turner, was initially charged with sexual misconduct. Again, keep his picture up, I want you to remember this guy because they're trying to hide him from you. He entered into a plea deal with prosecutors and was instead convicted for assault and battery and because He was a youthful offender at the time he attacked the pastor's daughter at a house party. He will not have to register as a sex offender. Let's put up the picture of the enablers here. David Pasco and Bill Weeks. David is on the left, Bill is on the right, okay? All right, Turner's father Walt works for an investigator for the South Carolina First Circuit solicitor. Pasco, the old attorney reportedly recused himself, allowing Second Circuit Deputy Solicitor David Miller to step in. It's all in the family. Additionally, the case was handed over to Second Circuit Solicitor Bill Weeks. And while there is no proof of anything illegal, locals say it is uncomfortable and it mirrors the scandalous murder case of the Murdoch family. We talked about that on the show. Finally, Turner, okay. Mr. Turner, who do you think is representing him? Well, none other than South Carolina State Senator 
Brad Hutto. Yeah, good old Brad, state senator to the rescue to represent one of his buddy's sons. In 2019, the senator made a remark that was insensitive and insane against the victim, implying that at least one of them had consensual sex with Turner. According to the Times and Democrat, uh, the senator said in court, quote, this is a quote. Well, guess what? You just had sex on the ground with a boy you didn't really know. And you got up and you feel ashamed. You feel regret. That's not rape. That's what he said. He's a senator and the attorney of the accused rapist. Victims of Turner say they are appalled. He only received a slap on the wrist from the Orangeburg County Judge Markley Dennis. Last week after admitting to assaulting the pastor's daughter, Chloe Bess in 2019. All right, let's put up a picture of the judge. You see the judge had to accept this foolishness, okay? Chloe Bess, who agreed to be identified as Turner's victim. This is something that's rare. But Chloe Bess agreed, Bless agreed, excuse me, Bess, agreed to be identified as Turner's victim. Bravely spoke out to condemn his sentence. She blasted her attacker's 50 breaches of his home arrest bond conditions, which court documents reported that he broke the rules to go golfing. He broke the rules to go to a Brazilian steakhouse and even traveled out of state to visit a car dealership in violation of his order. Turner was also accused of raping and beating another victim, 18 year old Dallas Staller, who died suddenly in November 2021. That charge against Turner was dropped and Turner was accused of a third rape in a separate county. Although those charges were dropped to put up his picture again. You know what you're looking at? In my opinion, you're looking at a serial rapist. That's what you're looking at, who would never receive the penalty required for his evil deeds because daddy and daddy's friends who are judges and senators and big money people will always protect him. Even though, as I said, in my opinion, he is in fact a serial rapist. Attorney for Miss Bess and Miss Stoller, the families, Sarah Ford of the South Carolina Victim Assistance Network, she's the good person. Ford has stated Turner's criminal record would likely be expunged despite his over 50 house arrest violations. But she has since filed motions to appeal that sentence. Chloe Bess is on the left, let's put a picture up. And Miss Dallas Stoller is on the right. These are strong individuals. At the time, Turner attacked Bess. Turner was 16 and out on bond for raping and beating Staller. He was out on bond. Did it again according to the accusation. Unfortunately, very few details on the third victim emerge beyond the fact that she's from Calhoun County. That his arrest for the assault had been just 41 days after the SC circuit judge had revoked his GPS monitoring and connection to Stoller's rape and that the SC law enforcement division did not proceed with criminal charges. Even the police department refused to enforce the law against this likely serial rapist. Stoller's sister said after Turner's sentencing this, Dallas made the difficult decision to move forward with the case all the while knowing because of who her alleged attacker was. She will be a target of personal attacks and insults in the community. The best family has since moved out of state to lessen the impact of the criminal proceedings in their lives. Meanwhile, Stoller's family has alleged that Turner's sentencing is a result of a conflict of interest. That's called corruption. Let's put up his picture again. I'm not scared of you. I'm not scared of your daddy, I'm not scared of the judge, I'm not scared of the senator, I'm not scared of none of you. 
Every single one of you should be exposed for exactly who you are. Soulless, no spine, lacking more uh, morality, no actual heart. So damn shame. All of them coordinated for this guy, all of them. Not one of them said, you know what? I go to church on Sunday and I'm sure they do. Now one of them said, I go to church on Sunday. This doesn't feel right here, Bill. This doesn't seem right. I'm having second thoughts. I got a daughter. I have children. I have a wife. I have a sister. Not one of them. All white men who protected this madness. This is why we fight. Fair and thoughts on this. You know, I it, it's just one of those things where I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm looking at it as if I were, you know, a prosecutor here. This would have been a slam dunk case. It should have been a slam dunk yeah. case. You can show this pattern of behavior right. with this particular individual, and across the board, this you know, protect this family, make sure everything goes under the rug. There are catastrophic failures in this system to protect this one boy that absolutely so many people need to be investigated for this. And this of course is the kind of story that that people don't hear. People don't know that these kinds of things exist, which is one of the reasons I love that you cover things like this because I have not seen this anywhere else. Nobody else would talk about this, but this kid is gonna do it again. I mean. If you've done it, you know, let's assume that all of this is true and he has done it three separate times and gotten away with it three separate times. You're setting up at least another woman to become a victim to this monster. And so then what? What happens then? What happens when another woman comes forward? Are you going to try to sweep this one under the rug too? Do you finally prosecute him? How many more women have to get raped? Before somebody actually faces justice here. And when that happens, do we go back and we go after daddy? Do we go after the judge? Do we go after Bill Weeks? Do we go after the police officers that wouldn't file charges? I would like to say, yes, we should. But I know that that's never gonna happen. But if this monster is what all these reports say he is, it's gonna happen again. Somebody else will be another victim. And this all could have been prevented yeah. had it not been for these political favors being traded back and forth in this case. That's right, brother. And just based on statistics, less than 10% of sexual assaults are actually reported. So just based on pure statistics, likely there are more victims who have not spoken out against this person and his powerful family. Back to the Chris Rock, Will Smith thing, more Chris Rock thing, okay? Uh, so his brothers have been talking and they should, damn it, all right? Uh, so one brother has now challenged Will Smith uh, to a celebrity boxing match. But also Tony Rock, um, one of the brothers of Chris Rock, he has something to say a few days ago. Let's go to that first. You want hit brother? Cause your bitch gave you a side eye? Oh, it's a lot of rock brothers. Y'all, you know it's a lot of rock brothers. It's ten of them. You about to see all the rock brothers. You're gonna be like, I didn't even know it was a rock brother. That rock brother? That's a rock brother? I ain't gonna start the show like that, but I just wanna let y'all know. I'm gonna ride. That gonna ride. I don't got a lot to lose. I mean, that's family, all right? So uh, I don't condone the use of the B word, obviously. Uh, naturally, the individual uh, Tony Rock has made it part of his comedic routine. But there's another brother, all right? His name is Kenny, Kenny Rock. Let's put up Kenny next to Chris, okay? This is quite fascinating. Now, I've said this already on record. Everybody knows why I stand. Will Smith was completely 100% out of line for what he did to Chris Rock. So, his brother Kenny, Chris Rock's brother Kenny, revealed that he recently signed to a celebrity boxing match. Remember these? When he asked if he thinks his older brother and Smith should get in the ring, Kenny responded, 
that the actor should fight him instead. He said, and I quote, I'll let the hands do the talking. So Kenny says the size difference wouldn't be an issue for him, even though Will's taller and once played Muhammad Ali on the big screen. He's confident he could score a victory over the Oscar winner, all right? We have to see if he's actually going to get the 10 year ban, he said. We, uh, they might say a 10 year ban and after three years, uh, they'll think we may have forgot about it and they'll slide him in there after two years, three years, five years. So we have to make sure these people do what they say they're going to do. Kenny added that he doubts Rock, uh, Rock accepted the public apology Smith posted on his Instagram, all right, which is new information for us. So you got two brothers so far who have gotten into it. Um, quite interesting, it's part of the family structure. I get the sentiment because of somebody, if somebody would have slapped somebody that I know or someone in my family, I would feel the exact same way, all right? Don't bring that mess over here. Fair and thoughts. Uh, you know, I don't disagree with you on that. I mean, I, I think any of us, you know, that have have any kind of family at all or even yeah. just close friends, we would react in that same way, you know. You went up there, uh, uh, you know, after this person that didn't see it coming, didn't know what was happening, thought, right. you know, maybe, oh, this is, Oh God, now I'm being hit. So yeah, the family is gonna be the one to speak out because I think Chris Rock probably too just wants to be like, listen, there's things I can and cannot say, you know, I don't wanna <laughs> screw up my reputation. I don't wanna do anything. So I think Chris Rock, you know, just playing it silent. But we all have those family members that we know would go out there yeah. <laughs> for us and on our behalf and say, oh no, hold up, listen. I mean, I think for me it would probably be be my mother. <laughs> would, would absolutely be saying, I will fight each and every one of you. <laughs> so I, I, I gotta hand it to Chris Rock's family. You know, it's good to know that there is that strong bond there. So, you know, it's actually kind of a feel good story when you think about it that way, that the yeah. family's this tight and they know they got each other's backs. And you do like to see that. Yeah, and I think Chris Rock is being silent right now because he's going to sue eventually. <laughs> so we'll see. All right, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable, stick and stay. Let me remind everyone of a few things. This is a big deal, so proud of the big homie John. Okay, Webby nomination, very exciting news, Dragon Squad and beyond. Uh, the Damage Report has been nominated for a Webby Award in the video news and politics category. Be sure to head over to tyt.com forward slash vote or vote.webbyawards.com, cast your vote with your help. You can win this thing, once you voted, share it on social media, okay? Also, we got some new merch for Indisputable. When Karens are causing trouble, the only cure is a double dose of Indisputable Truth from me. Check out the latest release on shoptyt.com and represent Indisputable now. Boom, beautiful thing, our producer Jordan made that, it's amazing. All right, big ups. And um, you know, we'll get to some of these comments. Craig Grace Souffle says, oh my God, thank God there was a bystander there with video. You notice that bystander cell phone video never have the malfunctioning problems that hot body uh, cop body cams do, just saying. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he, he turned it off on purpose. Hiram Bifidum, uh, end qualified immunity, Dr. Richard ended, get Adrian Lawrence, the SPLC. Uh, and ACLU, I think is it SCLC, ACLU, do it, for, do it for you, do it for every man, woman, and child, no matter who they are. Uh, we're working on it. Uh, every single one of us are working on it. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you Karen Wood. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're, you're I feel right. Back off. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Or. Seat off. Okay. So if I were to move over one seat, everything would be okay. 
sir. Is that what you're saying? You're just Is that what you're saying? Listen. Does that mean? Are you going to listen? All right, go ahead. Be, go ahead. Be my past. Okay. At this point, you are disrupting the show for these fine folks. We're going to ask you to leave. We'll get you a refund, though. I'll be nice and get you a refund. I don't know. I might want to be taking out handcuffs now. Sir, let's... Come on. I paid my money. I don't understand yeah, we'll why it here. is. If I sit over here, one at, seat, it's okay, the, and everything is right with the world. But if not, the world stops and everybody gets upset. Sir, let's go. I'll be nice and I'll get you a refund. I want more than just a refund. Okay. Can I get a drink? <laughs> There's actually, there's actually more. Here it is. We'll take care of you in the lobby. Fine. And then I won't come back. Okay. Ever. Okay. And I'm going to make sure everybody knows about this. Okay. I appreciate that. Would you like me to move over here? I don't want to be in your way, but we do need to go. I'm capitulating because I don't want to watch the movie now. You ruined it for me. Because of your silly ass rules. Okay, I apologize about that. I still think I'm being the bigger person here. Okay. <laughs> I think you dropped your phone. Yeah, should be glad. At least I didn't pay $900 for it. Goodbye, everyone. Enjoy your movie. He said he will make sure that everybody knows. No, damn it, I will. All right. I'm going to make sure, sir, that everyone knows what happened that day. <laughs> Put up his picture. Full, full mass. All right. Let me say this. Anyone who wears that kind of jogging t-shirt combination and puts on a pleather trench coat. Is going to give you problems. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, I'm about to fall out my damn shit. <laughs> uh, my dear brother, what are your thoughts on this particular male, Karen, who's who's obviously the bigger person in this whole argument here? Uh, he he certainly looks like he's the bigger person there. I'll, I'll give him that. You know, last week uh, I was boarding a plane at 5 a.m. I was exhausted. I'd been up for three hours already, and uh, I got in the wrong seat. Uh, it was a window seat. I accidentally got one row ahead of where I should have been. Still a window seat. So the guy whose seat it was came up and he said, "I'm, I, you're in my seat." Now I could have said, "Well, it's the same window seat. You're just one row. Just take my seat. It's fine." But no, what I did was I said, "Oh man, I'm so sorry. I'm an idiot. Let me get out of your way," and it was over. That's all yeah. that dude had to do was say, "Oh, I'm I'm so sorry." I. I, I totally forgot, yeah, my seat's over here. Let me just get out of your way real quick and let's get along with this. I, I have no idea how people can can behave like that, how they can, what what is wrong with them to think that something so simple is like, oh, there were assigned seats, that's how we booked our tickets here. Right. Let exactly. me move out of your way. Obviously, you picked this seat, you wanted this seat, you paid for this seat. And I'm in the wrong, so let me make it right. That's it. I mean, this would have been a five second exchange, and everybody goes on with their life. They get to see whatever movie it is they were all paying to see there. But something just snaps in some of these people, and I find it so both intriguing and weird. I want to get down into the psychology of these Don't people. Don't do it, brother. <laughs> Don't do it, brother. It'll take you somebody not much more back. qualified than I am, but I, I do think somebody, somebody somewhere has to finally get these people in the chair and talk to them and get to what is at the root of this. So maybe we can stop these weird incidents. But I mean, this guy was wrong and he refused to admit he was wrong, and now he doesn't get to see his favorite movie. I, yeah, you know, you know, oh boy. You know, I think I know what it is. Put up his picture again. Put up his picture. It was the pleather trench coat <laughs> that did it. All right, you can't tell him nothing when he walks out the house. That's <laughs> all right.
This is an update, all right, an update to a story. We reported on a 17 year old African American female, a child who was killed while riding her bicycle by someone who was actually on drugs. The police blamed her even though they confirmed the person that killed her had drugs in their system. They blamed the 17 year old black child. Well, guess what? More information has come out showing that those cops were absolutely wrong as we said on day one. Put up the picture of the victim in this case. Her name is Obian Uju Oswego. Ms. Oswego was 17 years of age. She was blamed for her own death after she was hit by an impaired driver while riding her bike home. The family's attorney, Bruce Hagen, said law enforcement, they got the information wrong. Now we said that on day one. I wanna show you a picture of the car that hit her. Look at the damage to that vehicle. Jesus, That car hit a bicycle with a child on it, okay? The driver was impaired with drugs. They blamed the child. It looks like that car hit a damn tractor trailer. It hit a bicycle with a child. This happened in Barrow County, all right? The Barrow County DA's office uh, won't charge the driver because according to the state troopers, the blame is on the 17 year old child. And so the DA's office is trying to pass the buck because they lack leadership. They could directly charge this if they chose. Oh Well, no, 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 state trooper said uh, that because the 17 year old did not have lights and reflective clothing, she was in violation of law. Well, wait a minute, you know, driving impaired, driving high on stuff is a violation of law as well. But guess what, we've exposed something. The report states the driver, Chrissy, Rawlins, and we've looked for her picture, we cannot find it. If you find it, post it. Chrissy Rawlins, who was high on multiple drugs while driving, was not at fault because Miss Oswego did not have a light on the back of her bike and was not riding on the right hand side of the road and was not wearing reflective clothing. Have you ever heard of such ridiculous garbage before? It gets deeper. The attorney, Bruce Hagen, who's with the family who conducts bike law training for police officers, said the responding officer and the GSP reconstruction team investigated the accident, but simply did not know Georgia bike laws. The attorney said Georgia laws do not do not require bikes to have lights as long as there are reflectors, which the 17 year old's bike already had on it. According to the attorney, the 17 year old was turning left and had a reflector on her bike. He also said Rollins, the driver, should be charged with vehicular homicide because of the toxicology report, which confirmed She was high out of her mind. It said she had four drugs in her system, including methamphetamine and Valium. She was charged with the DUI and endangering her own children who were in the car at the time of the accident, but not charged with killing this 17 year old child, put up the picture again. Now damn it, something's not adding up. Something is not adding up. You mean to tell me that there's a woman named Miss Rawlins who gets charged with a DUI, charged for endangering her own children, but not charged for killing a 17 year old black child. Something's not adding up. I don't know where the corruption is, but it's somewhere in here. There's more. Let's put up a picture of the DA. His name is Brad Smith. and. The sheriff, his name is Jude Smith. They say they're not related. So 
right now you have three entities that could actually investigate and bring charges they have chosen not to. The state trooper division could have brought charges, they did not. Their investigation said no charges warranted. The county sheriff could bring charges and the district attorney could bring charges. But they are relying on the or hiding behind the troopers report saying, well, the trooper said it was um, the fault of the 17 year old. There's nothing we can do here, really. I guarantee you, if the driver hit a white child who was on the bicycle, 17 years of age, you wouldn't give a damn what that trooper said. There would be charges here. Boils my blood. You know, it, it, well, well, first of all, I do have to point out real quick that the photo you just showed of you know the the sheriff and the other guy, that is like the biggest contrast in forehead size I think I've ever seen yeah. in a side by side picture. Uh, but but really to the issue here. There's a lot of things that this could be. Obviously, as you said, this could be a very clear case of corruption. And if that is what's happening, we need to be able to get to the bottom of that. And unfortunately, there's not enough details at the moment to be able to say any of that. This could be something as simple as just lazy, lazy, lazy cops. I mean, it takes a heck of a lot more effort to go ahead and do the paperwork and come up with the charges for vehicular vehicular homicide, not manslaughter, homicide than it does for a DUI, something that they do every single day. So it could be laziness, it could be good old fashioned racism. Okay, here's a, a black child with a name that we can't even pronounce. She's probably not even from America, let's just blame her and move on with our lives. I mean, this this is, you, you saw the vehicle, that wasn't caused by a bike, that was caused by that young lady's body hitting that car. Yeah, Those are body dents. Yeah. And this woman gets off with a DUI and having her, her kids in the car. I don't know how old the kids are, but if they're of any kind of age where they're capable of forming memories, that's something that's gonna stick with them the rest of their life, that, that young lady's body going through their windshield because their mother was high while driving them around. This story stinks so much and we have to find the cause of that stink. This is not something I think that, that goes away. Right. I think this is definitely something to keep an eye on because someone somewhere in that department is gonna have to come clean, leak it to a good investigative journalist if yep. you've got it. Something's going on inside of there and we gotta figure it out. And we're gonna stay on top of it. We got more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick and stay. All right, welcome back. We got a lot of show left. Let me read a couple of viewer comments, don't have a lot of time for many. Um, Eric the Upa Dragon says, looks like a Hulk Hogan wannabe. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, Don Booch says, you're doing a good job for our nation by calling attention to bad people. Keep it up, love you like a brother. And I love you back like a brother, thank you for that Don. Uh, and uh, is it Dringer Dragon, Barrow County District Attorney 770. 3073040. All right. Your hands up. I live here. I live here. What's your name? Jasmine Horn. Step out the car. Jasmine Horn? Yes. All right, face the car. I live here. Okay, face the car. Put your hands behind your back. Drop the bag. Okay. I live here. What's wrong? I'll explain to you all. Hold on. Yep, cover. Just back him off. You all right? Yeah. All right. You got anything on you? Any kind of weapons? Anything like that? No. All right. You got anything in your shoes or anything? You know, weed, nothing like that. No. Okay. I don't smoke. I'm a school teacher. I, I don't understand what's going on. Okay, I'll explain everything just, to you in just a second. I just finished working out. I don't know what's going on. Okay. All right, have a seat for me. The only people who did something wrong were the cops who pulled her over 
had guns drawn on her. Her name is Miss Jasmine Horn, okay? This happened in June 14, 2021. Uh, this is a really interesting background, all right? Charlotte uh, Mecklenburg police drew down on this school teacher, all right? She was wrongly detained. Uh, the story broke when Ms. Horn told a local station she feared she would have become the next Breonna Taylor. The second grade teacher had been sitting in her car outside her family's home when the police approached her with guns drawn. Horn was in handcuffs for 15 minutes during that time. Officers spoke with her mother and grandmother who confirmed that they had no idea who Jocelyn Horn was. They were looking for somebody named Jocelyn or Jocelyn, not Jasmine. Here's that conversation. Do you know yeah, a, a, a Jaselyn, J-A-S-E-L-Y-N? Not her twin, I don't think. They twins. That's right, right, right. Jasmine, and this is Jaleesa. Yeah, right. we're not looking for we're not looking for Jaleesa. Do you know a Jas a Jaslyn? Jaslyn. What's going on, sir? Okay. We're we're trying to find a Jaslyn. A uh who? -huh. Jaslyn. J a s e l y n Horn. There's no Jaslyn Horn there. Okay, so y'all don't know who that is. No. Your daughter's out of handcuffs. She's about to be let go. Um. I just wanted to talk to y'all and see if y'all know who that was. Did you handcuff my daughter? Yeah, based on what I, I told you. What? Why would you handcuff my daughter and that's her car? That's her vehicle. Right, and we got that as a suspect vehicle. And, and just arrest somebody just because of an email and not find out the an person's email from, name and who the car belongs to? Yes, ma'am. An email from a detective saying a suspect in a violent crime is driving that car. Oh, let her go. Let her go. She's already let go, man. Damn right, let her go. Uh, your detective is a dumbass, by the way. You're a dumbass too. You know why? Because all you had to do was say, ma'am, can we see your ID? Oh, well, look at there. Your ID says Jasmine. Hmm. All right, ma'am, go about your way. Uh, we apologize for the inconvenience. You mean to tell me none of these cops who are supposed to be trained investigators, not one of them said, well, let's look at the idea, ID. As a matter of fact, the license tag came back as Jasmine. Nobody questioned that. Wow. Charlotte's uh, Police Review Board, according to the Charlotte Observer, Charlotte's Police Review Board has agreed to investigate a citizen's complaint about officers who pointed a gun at and handcuffed a school teacher last year after they mistakenly identified her as a stabbing suspect. The Citizens Review Board has rarely ruled in favor of citizens bringing complaints against police and often hears cases related to officers use of force like shootings. Last week's unanimous vote signals the review board believes there's enough evidence that the CMPD should have taken disciplinary action against the officers involved, but it is not a final decision. The police chief gets a recommendation, put up the chief. Police Chief Johnny Jennings, buck stops with him. He's the person in charge. Now I wanna remind everyone about citizens uh, review boards, all right? Uh, these review boards for the vast majority of cities are in fact non-binding. They have no power. At least in the city of Atlanta, they have subpoena power. But their decisions are not final, the decisions are just recommendations, all right? Okay. For those who are watching by way of linear television, that concludes our time with you. Make sure you jump over to one of the streaming services to continue watching the program. We thank you so much for continuing to support Indisputable. Remember, take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember, the truth is always indisputable.